In this video we will study three diagrams without replacement for two color balls with sampling of three. An urn contains 12 blue balls and 8 red balls. Three balls are picked up at random without returning the balls to the urn. First question, what is the number of all possible outcomes or the number of elements in the sample space? The first thing we do, we number the balls. So we number the blue balls from 1 to 12 and the red balls from 1 to 8 to make them distinguishable or we number all of them from 1 to 20. So let us first examine the drawing process. We may get balls number 11, 9 and 6 or balls number 6, 11 and 9. So that means the ball come out of the urn in order and the sample space is composed of ordered elements. So the outcome of the probability experiment is ordered and without replacement and the probability of, of any event in the sample space must be solved using a formula which requires order and no replacement and this is the permutation formula which can be used under these two conditions. So the number of elements in the sample space for the case of order can be computed from the permutation formula under the condition of withdrawing without replacement. We have the number of population n is equal to 20 and r the sampling size equal to 3. We are picking 3 objects out of out of population of 20 so we substitute that in the permutation formula n with 20 and r with 3 and we get 20 times 19 times 18 and this is equal to 6840 possible outcome question number two find the probability of the joint outcome events using the tree diagram so let B represents the drawing blue ball and R represents the drawing red ball. So we are starting the tree diagram with 12 blue and 8 red and the total is 20 balls. In the first draw we may pick either blue or red and the total number of remaining balls after the first draw is 19. Let's see now how many balls remain after each possible draw. If we draw blue, then we have a 12 blue minus 1, that is 11 blue, and the red will remain the same, and that is 8 red. And if we draw red out of 8 red, then we have 8 minus 1, 7 red remaining, and the 12 blue ball will remain the same. In the second draw, we may again pick blue or red for each possibility and the total number of remaining balls would be 18. Now let's see the remaining balls after each draw. If we draw a blue ball here, after drawing this blue, then the remaining blue will be 11 minus 1, that is 10 and the remaining red will be 8 minus 0 and that is 8. And if we draw red after blue, then the remaining red will be 8 minus 1 and that is 7 and the remaining blue will be still 11. If we draw blue after red, then the remaining blue will be 12 minus 1 and that is 11 blue and the remaining red will be 7 minus 0 and that is 7. And if we draw red after red, then the remaining red will be 7 minus 1 and that is 6 and the remaining blue will be 12 minus 0 and that is 12. In the third draw, we may still pick blue or red because we still have blue or red balls remaining from the second draw here. After the third draw, we may have all possible joint outcome of drawing, let's say, blue and blue and blue, or blue, blue and red, 
blue, red, and red, and so on, and these are all the possible joint outcomes. Let's look now at the probability for each draw. So for the first draw, we are picking one ball out of 20, so the probability denominator is 20. For the second draw, we are picking one ball out of 19, so the probability denominator is 19. And for the third draw, we are picking one ball out of 18, because we are starting with 18 here, so the probability denominator is 18. So what is the probability of drawing the first blue ball here? We are starting with 12 blue, so the probability is 12 over 20. And what is the probability of drawing the first red? We are starting with 8 red, so the probability is 8 over 20. So what is the probability of drawing blue after blue? We have 11 blue here remaining, so it is 11 over 19. And what is the probability of drawing red after blue? We have 8 red here, so the probability is 8 over 19. And we keep doing that, so we have here 12 over 19, and for this branch the probability is 7 over 19. Now what is the probability of drawing blue after the first and the second blue? We have 10 blue remaining, so it is 10 over 18. And what is the probability of drawing red after the first and the second blue? We have 8 red remaining, so it is 8 over 18. And we keep doing that for each branch of this tree to find all possible probabilities for each branch. To find the probability of picking first blue and second blue and third blue, we highlight the branches leading to this event and we multiply the first probability of the first branch with the second branch probability with the third branch probability. And this is the probability of picking three blue in order. To find the probability of the event first blue, second blue, and third red, we highlight the branches leading to this event, and we multiply the probability of picking first blue with the probability of picking the second blue with the probability of picking red. Again, to find the probability of picking first blue and second red and third blue, we highlight the corresponding branches leading to this event, and we multiply the probability of picking first blue with the probability of picking second red with the probability of picking third blue. For the rest of the events, we do exactly the same such as this event, we highlight the branches, we highlight the probabilities corresponding to each branch, and we multiply them together. For this event, we do the same, highlight the branches, highlight the probabilities, and multiply all of them, and we keep doing that for each event, and writing down the corresponding probabilities, until we finish and now we have the probabilities of each joint outcome. So let us now isolate these joint outcomes and place them in order and write the corresponding probabilities clearly for each of them. The union of these events forms a sample space and now we created partition in the sample space. We name each event, such as this event here, or this event, 
first red, second blue, and third blue. And we keep doing that for the rest of the events. And finally, we compute the numerator and the denominator for each probability. Question number three, what is the probability that the first and the second balls are blue? So back to the sample space. It can be this event where the first and the second are blue balls, or it can be this event. Both events are disjoint, so the probability of this event is the sum of their probabilities, and that is equal to 0.34. Question number 4. What is the probability of picking two blue first or two red first? So we may pick two blue first here, or two blue here first, or we may pick two red first, or two red first from here. So we have four disjoint event and the probability of picking two blue first or two red first is the sum of these probabilities. And that is 0.49. Question number five, what is the probability of picking one red only? So we may pick one red from here or one red from here, or one red from here. So the probability is the sum of these probabilities, and that is 0.46. Question number 6. What is the probability of picking first red and second blue? So we may pick first red and second blue from this event, or we may pick first red and second blue from this event and the probability of this event is the sum of these two probabilities and that is 0.25